and hey i've been forgetting to switch this little overlay i believe this is like the final round so we'll call it round six Farzy coming in oh firstly let's do it after this one right because then um because this is just the last one before a little break unless Farzy wants to hey Farzy, let me know if you really want to we can do it oh guys can we get a big round of applause Rarzy just won the in-game tournament Rarzy, you are a beast my man uh guys people clap people clap let me see where's the people class people is it people clap i always forget yeah guys people clap Rarzy taking home the in-game tournament uh guys he's not only a wonderful caster he takes it down so a whole lot of insight from our uh from our tournament winner here uh but yeah Lodi, let's get predictions rolling so who's gonna win is it gonna be dave is it gonna be jay streamer style stamming <laughs> <laughs> but hey rosie congratulations like i said this is gonna be the final best of one and then we go on the little break and then we keep things rolling what is the rewards for the in-game tournament i always lost first round night tug i believe it's pretty good you get a whole lot of little goodies i mean rosie if you want to let us know what you received uh let us know it would be cool to see you and Lodi, you're not a believer in jay okay i mean hey that's a safe bet dave goblino always a safe bet I just want to make some uh, hamburger help if we forgot to buy ground beef. No, we're really not the ground beef. Uh, so now I just have mac and cheese. Oh, you know what, really? Mac and cheese is still wonderful, though. But yeah, you know, some ground beef will go a long way, man. A, a burger right now sounds delicious. But hey, we're really pick up the ground beef tomorrow, hopefully. But hey, guys, let's get back to the match. And yeah, guys, pain, pain, pain. Uh, but we did see the wind burst connect onto the calibus thankfully for j dragon that is a reactive vial the newest tech and by new i mean like maybe like a month or so now tech and all right guys matt gia voting for his clubmate here uh flash you got 60k on j all right guys you guys are pulling all the guns for this one here all right so let's see yeah a cat wait wait kappa a, a cool cat versus charizard <laughs> <laughs> all right we could cut we could make it we could paint we could paint it that way all right something dave has to consider aqua stone is online ice the lactite is online so this tokon not necessarily safe you know uh, uh aqua stone plus a sparkling bullet slash charge iron filings actually no no he has to charge iron filings because he needs aoe Ah, uh, so okay, Tokon stays in and goes for the soul there. Oh, forget the iron filings. That is a huge amount of damage onto the Zizar. Very impressive. Oh, and gets the confirmed kill. So ignoring the Tokon. You know, this is why these guys are playing them. Over, I'm over here in my little computer chair. I would have attacked the Tokon, but J Dragon knowing exactly what he's doing. Getting rid of the Electric Custodian Zizar very nice and early. Well done. A nice little edge up for J Dragon so far. Ah, guys, forgive me. I didn't look at the scoreboard. If I looked at the scoreboard, I probably would have made a better judgment. Of course, J Dragon has Yukama in the back. So, yeah, Yukama could pretty much sweep that Tolkon underwater. So, yeah, because of the Yukama, you definitely want to target the Zizar. And all right, taking away that baton pass for the next couple of turns. Uh, ba the wastewater not going to be doing all that much. Toxic ink actually does a fair amount. Does 25%. So yeah, little by little, Dave is losing a little grit of the grip in this match. But of course, this is only turn four. So the full picture hasn't been painted, of course. Uh, but man, J-Dragon coming out strong, coming out very aggressive. So let's see for this opening Scottable. If he wants to stay in, he might just be going down. Swolzy has Oshi Dashi back online, but doesn't want to risk it here. So swaps into the Mashook. So let's see what goes down. 
Yeah, saving the Gozi down the road, looking to be the right bet, eating the wastewater as best you could. Let's see what this Calibus decides to do because he is very low on stamina. And she's Calibus taking so much damage there. Is it worth the water jet for the kill? And no, it removed the toxic. <laughs> <laughs> so it would have killed if the toxic spores would have stayed however because of the thunder strike adding an ex a tick of exhaustion onto himself the water jet actually removed the tick of toxic so scottavo lives to see another day but not that significant right any other move like a little mashuk pj will take it down so let's see what Dave potentially wants to swap into. It might just be a, a P jab regardless into that spot. There we go, Willie. Really, the seasoning goes a long way, huh? And hey, forget the P jab. The uppercut will do. So sacrificing the Scott of Volt. And man, Jade Dragon getting the lead here. Two Temptems down for the side of Dave Goblino. And Jay Dragon still working with the entirety of his team so far. And you know, the Mushok still uh, chilling nice and healthy. So has a clean answer for the Volfi later on. As we mentioned before, Yukama is there for the Tokon. And you know, the Tokon is technically there for the Mushok as well. We have ourselves a mirror match. So, Tornado on the other one, 94%, down to 34, massive amount of damage, but the Wastewater trying to return the favor just a tad little bit, and okay, brings it down under 50% with the Toxic Tick. Oh, Jay actually ignoring the Mashuk. This is interesting. I guess this is Jay Dragon's way of saying that Mushuk is running out of stamina, so maybe doesn't pose such a long-term threat, perhaps. And yeah, Jax, that does sting a little bit, but he still gets the kill on the next turn. Alright, so taking a gamble on that wastewater, knowing that Mushuk was gonna swap out, does swap into Yukama, but man, I think Dave knew this and swapped in the Wolfie. You know, even though Yukama comes in here, an Aquatic Whirlwind on the Volfi still tends to do quite a bit. And wow, the Fire on Fire Carnage. Fire Tornado still enough to take it down. So now, this is virtually, I don't want to say GG. But if we take a look at the scoreboard. Actually, I, I thought Mushuk was healthy. I was about to say, who in the world takes down Mushuk? But man, J-Door gone, not messing around. Three Temtems have been eliminated from Dave Goblino's team. J-Dragon has all five. Aquatic Whirlwind. Oh my goodness. J is coming here to game. Yeah, Matt, exactly. J-Dragon's playing a little Dungeons and Dragons in between the matches. So I think Yukama 100% should be going down here. It should be a plague here. Oh, never mind. Does Vortex. It looks like both of these guys uh, didn't go for the straightforward play. Trying to prioritize the other ones. And hey, Mercy, a little Unite action. Man, you guys are making me want to get a Switch. Honestly, you guys really make me want to get a Switch. Um... So yeah, we did see the Mushuk overexerted this previous turn. But honestly, actually, you know, Dave did a really good job. Uh, cooperation gives a bit of stamina and uh, HP back to the two win. But this is slowly getting out of hand. Wolfie versus the world, but at least you finally get a kill here. But wait a second. Is there a world where this Volfi brings it back? It's almost strong into everything, right? The exception being Mushuk. It's a great game, just made ultra nice. And I know like like literally 70-80% of the Tempte community is playing a Unite. So yeah, for sure. Uh, Subaki, you did a tournament? Wait, Subaki, did you host a tournament or did you play in a tournament? Because that would be cool to see. 
I wish I had a switch. Yeah, also you got you know I never really wanted a switch until you night came out and you guys are going crazy. Uh and yeah, we really I've have heard I have heard it is a bit pay to win. It's is like not too pay to win, but it is a bit pay to win. And hey, maybe that means that maybe that means that um uh, maybe that means that Temtem Unite is somewhere in the pipeline. Do you guys think Kremlin will ever go that direction? But all right, uh, it looks like Dave Galbino had enough of that matchup. G, 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 Dave J Dragon added the Ubu, so that's how you know it's serious time now. Oh, yeah, J Dragon and his Ubu's unstoppable. And let's see. So, instant ban on the only win Temtem on his team, it will be the Tolkon. Uh, for obvious reasons, right? The Mashok, Nidrasil, Calibus, Tolk, uh, Two Vine. They really don't want to mess with that. So, really good ban. And I guess the same could almost be said about the Yowler. He's been very impressive today. Yowler in general is just always so strong. Even on a team like Altos, where he doesn't specifically have Thames, like a Kinu or. Uh, you know anyone who would stonewall it up and, and buff the defenses it's still going to have that value it still has hibernation and matcha it still has come back so banning that outright not having to worry about it protecting Thames like your Volfi, like your noxalotl definitely a safe play from j dragon especially with a lot of these other Thames. he's not as worried on the type charts uh you know this this Volfi doesn't love the mushuk but pretty much everybody else it's okay fighting Mm hmm yeah so we'll see it looks like the other band will be that nidrasil so man we've seen time and time again nidrasil has been such a wall for these tamers so getting it out of the way not a bad idea is what j dragon has in mind let's see how Alto wants to return the favor here i mean we've said it mushuk is such a formidable tempt him as well but maybe he's looking at this golzi i mean it is electric for calibus it is mainly for the two rock but I don't know, he kind of has an answer with the two rock as well, right? A big stone ball might put it down, but okay, maybe Golzi was going to outspeed all the time. Yeah, those speedy Oshidashis, that is just as scary as Skunch. Even without the brawny trait, Golzi just hits so hard, has so much base speed. And with that electric typing, having the effective damage into Naga, being able to fight back, uh, you know, after the Deceit Aura turns have had their way, that just makes Golzi a little bit too scary for the end game. So, ban it outright, play with your Scaravolt and your Calibus, go for the win. And and that's definitely what Alto's looking for. With these last two Thames, the Naga and the Turok, I could see an argument for both, right? The, uh, the Naga is absolutely incredible against the Mushuk, but also the Turok, with that wind, it's good against so many of the other Toxic Thames. And really, Turok's base attack is so incredibly high. I, I, I personally feel like that would be the way to go for Alto. But he does decide on the Naga instead. He wants to take advantage of some of the slower Thames he has. Give them more presence with the Seed Aura. Use the support Tem for your final pick instead of that aggro. Yeah, that is right. Looks like he wants to take full advantage of the Sea Aura, as you mentioned. But here it is, guys. The last battle of these lower bracket finals. Of course, it is best of three, so only game number one. But hey, a little early momentum does feel good. Allows you to play a little bit riskier for a couple games going forward. Let's see who does indeed get that early momentum. Is it Alto? Is it J Dragon? Let's jump into this first game number one. And actually, looking at the current state of things... A Mushuk looking kind of nice against J Dragon, right? Can start things off with a P jab in either direction. Doesn't feel all that bad. Let's take a look at the scoreboard to see who is a bit more of a priority target for Alto here. I definitely think Wolfie with the Earth uh, scares Scottavolt just a little bit too much, as well as Plagues towards Calibus is, is pretty decent. Calibus does swap into a Plague as we see it happen, so a base 20%. <laughs> even it's only gonna take five of those if nothing else to kill this calibus perfect jab towards the floof that is a pretty good play though now floof isn't very happy to fight back against anybody here we know that calibus is perfectly fine taking another double in next turn and probably just that uppercut if, if uppercut on its own doesn't kill floof then that toxic ink is going to be right there with it and it's not even going to need the toxic ticks 
Yeah, I completely agree. I think that minus one defense was beautiful for Alto. As you said, I actually, yeah, I don't, I think the uppercut might not kill, so it's probably good to double up. But J Dragon most likely anticipating that damage might just swamp into one of those toxic temptems. So maybe a safer play for Alto, maybe a P jab one more time, because perhaps a minus two defense. If Wolfie really wants to stay in, Toxic Ink might just be enough with minus two defense either way. So maybe just getting that P jab on one of those backline toxics gives them a little bit of the edge going forward, perhaps. Yeah, with sounds like the Mushuk on J-Dragon's side that can swap in, there definitely are uh, are some good Thames to take those hits, but it is the mix instead. And Mushuk doesn't want to be jab that little mental boy, he wants to bring the two-vine instead. Big guns on the field, and now mix, I mean, it was probably within range of death, even at 100% to the CPG. Yeah, I think so as well. And you know, recently, Two Vines attack did indeed get buffed, right? So, you know, it used to do that even with the nerf back then. So I think 100% for sure at 75%. I just don't know if there's a way to TV train a mix to survive that. I mean, maybe max uh, max HP, max defense. But of course, that's not a too, uh, uh, a too effective mix spread right there. So that CPG really threatened out the mix. Let's try to see who we could potentially swap in. I'm guessing the Mushuk feels okay. But you know, looking at J-Dragon's team, this 2-Vine actually feels very, very nice. Effective into all those Toxics. The only downside that Alto's 2-Vine has is his low special defenses. Like, if he thinks the mix can survive, a Crystal Spike should be doing like 40-50% to 50 on the 2-Vine, I want to say. Yeah, at the very least, that would outspeed, right? So mm -hmm. then if Mix were to go down, it's not fantastic as Mix would be very nice to fight the Mushuk and Naga and Alto side, but it would also allow for the free swap back in of Floof and just go straight for that DV. At that point, I think Tuvine would be dead in that combo, but it's it, it might be too big of a sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. if Floof would be back in, it would take another Toxic King on its minus one defense from the Calibus, and instead, Alto just retreats straight back to Mushuk. So if it is that Crystal Spikes, if he does decide to stay, it's not going to do very oh. much, but he does it to himself. He knocks himself into that Puppet Master range. Wow. He's got the Rock Shield. It doesn't even matter that he was injured. He is ready to go, ready to survive, ready to Psy Surge this Mushuk. Yeah, very impressive. Leave it to J-Dragon to Crystal Spikes himself. And, you know, two fine still wouldn't have been that bad at, uh, going into the Calibus, of course, if it was a Feather Gatling. But, you know, I think also this isn't the first time he plays against J-Dragon as we saw the scoreboards earlier. So maybe he pulled one of these off against Alto earlier. Uh, so not too bad. It is in Puppet Master range. And as it stands, there is no AoE currently on the board. Unless, of course, Calibus runs Tsunami. But I don't think we've seen a Tsunami Calibus in quite some time. So it's very unlikely for Alto to be running that. And looking at the back line, I'm not too sure which Temtem has AoE on Alto's side. Do you see one, Verzi? Well, it would have to be that one that just swapped in and has E-Storm available next oh, turn. True. The Eamon if onto this Calibus, though, means it OXs for that Toxic Ink, right? It's... 60.3 yeah that's a decent size ox down eight percent of hp for not really much damage on the bad dragon yeah not too bad but hey i think you nailed it perfectly electric storm is most likely what's going to be going down from the scott of Old. and looking at things uh, i don't think this mix or this calibus is able to take down scott of Old in a single swoop meaning in this turn five i mean a crystal spike does a little bit a water jet does a fair amount. But wait a second, Rarzi. I just realized this is a good friend. This is a good friend, Scottival. Half full did not proc. Everybody needs a good friend Beetle every now and again. <laughs> this is this is a good time for it. A couple of swaps do come through. Wolfie back on for J-Dragon. Mushuk back on for Alto. Knowing that it was coming, predicting that swap. Electric Storm is still clicked, as it is still some pretty good damage on the Bad Dragon, the Calibus down close to that 50% range up until the reactive vial says no -uh, no more and is very healthy once more the water jet does quite a lot of damage on the scottavolt without that half full uh, plus defense plus special defense 
he he might just struggle a little bit he definitely doesn't hit as hard without the uh the buffs in the special attack range so he's he's gotta he, he's gotta make do he's gotta uh find a way to have good friend proc and protect some of these Thames and make a difference this game or else half full would have proven itself to be better yeah absolutely i feel i like the tech though coming from from alto's side that umbrella knowing that water damage does pack a big punch against god of also metagating i believe it is 20 percent off water technique so that water jet looking to be a bit more crazy if that wasn't there but good on alto but you know the east storm didn't do all that much and it actually isn't looking to do all that much going forward with those two turns of nullification this turn and the next one this caliph is posing a decent threat but at the same time he's running extremely low on stamina if he wants to do anything this turn he's gonna have to heavily overexert which i don't think is too ideal so perhaps i think j dragon looking for a proper swap out let's see is also swapping into his own calibus what does j dragon swap into Ooh, j dragon bringing the mix back out knowing that that east storm is going to be pressured away by the potential earth techniques and Floof just goes for the bush, protect itself from another P-Jab, which means it'll survive this turn if it really wants to. Probably. With that, uh, with the regen turn, it, it is looking pretty healthy again. And it is asking for quite a lot, despite it being minus one defense. I, I think that it would hold on this turn if it wanted to stay out, but is there much of a purpose to stay out? We know Calibus would only be knocked down to 32%. That might be asking too much of the mix to do the remaining 32% with the crystal spikes. Yeah, it's kind of close though. I could almost see an argument for that double up on Calibus, but I think you want to play it a bit safer. So I agree. I'm thinking Potato doesn't seem all that terrible to swap into the Volfi, but maybe realizing that brings back out the AoE target in that Scatterville. And ah, interesting enough, it will be a double swap. And oh, it is time. It is time for some deceit or shenanigans, but wait a second. Orcs Dirt trapping both of these Temtems in. Uh, and the DV got a bolt no longer with us. I. That was rough. Now, at the very least, there is a Fury available for Naga, but, uh, but it's not very healthy at the moment. Mushuk coming back out. I guess, if nothing else, this is a pretty good trade turn. If uh, if Naga goes for the Fury, we we have to assume Mix is leaving, so it probably wouldn't do much damage. Uh, but maybe just the double in on the Volfi instead, go for the uppercut with the minus one and, and a nice Psy Surge or Beta Burst to try and do more damage. Might be able to kill the Volfi, take advantage of the Mix swap, and find yourself in a decent situation for the following turn. Yeah, I could totally see that. Uh, of course, you want to be careful. I was thinking Mashuk could be a good one, but of course, with those beta bursts, you might be better off bringing in something like a Noxolotl and a Calibus. So let's see if J-Dragon knows exactly what he wants to get done. So does bring in the potato. And whoa, Verzi, the mix stays in. He's calling the bluff here. He's thinking Ulto is going to overthink it and not go for the fury. And he nailed oh. it. No <laughs> fury. Man, the ball's on J-Dragon right now. He knows his club leader well. He's probably played this scrim a thousand times and maybe a million more in his head. And it has paid off here as he gets the perfect read. Fantastic damage onto Mashuk. And, and really just puts him in a terrible situation as now Floof does have Narcoleptic Hit available. Yeah, very true. As it came in on the swap, it did have to take a little bit of damage, but incredible stuff. Jay, as you mentioned, just almost in Ulto's head as of right now. But hey, that doesn't always play the same way going into things like game number two, game number three. So let's see. Yeah, he's getting the upper hand indeed for this game number one. But of course, Ulto staying collected and trying to find where he could try to get the upper hand going forward going into that turn number nine so the sea aura i believe we're on the third to last right three turns of the sea aura have expired so far and okay caleb is coming in and okay i think jay's saying he's going for the fury now right <laughs> going for the fury wouldn't have been the right play so he does the right thing with this eye surge on the potato Knocks it down to 27%. That is within trance range, so it gets those special defense, special attack buffs, puts itself to sleep, and gets a bunch of regen. Was that also... 
No, it, it was not. Uh, or no, it didn't go low enough for a first aid kit, did it? So, <laughs> so it could still be a first aid kit, Potato. Yeah, I believe from the matches we watched before, it has been shown to be Pillow. So it definitely does have Pillow, but it would be a nice tech as we've seen in the past. Uh, but yeah, it was a Pillow as we saw from the previous uh, lower bracket finals. So going to get a bit of 10% recovery initially. So on the turn, staying in. Uh, and wait a second. It, it it didn't hit trans trait just yet, right? That was a sleep from uh from the narco, right? Uh no, the side search put it into trans. Oh, true. So true. now okay. Toxic Ink wakes it up, doesn't allow for any of uh, those extra shenanigans with the regen, but he reads being woken up. He puts the mix in purposefully. He knows Puppet Master pushes this in. I get the acid reflux and I kill the Naga wow incredible stuff you know even when you're sleeping on a temptem it's always worth just to click and attack most people have the tendency to just hit rest they're like you know my opponent is not going to attack me but j dragon very experienced tamer clicked the button and got rewarded for it. calibus uh interesting enough did wake him up because of the puppet master mix so got that beautiful acid reflux um so well done, J Dragon. Just like how we did with Dave Goblino, little by little, uh, having that rolling snowball going downhill, just going from bad to worse for Alto. Just finding himself with three Temptems remaining. I think Alto can get a couple kills though, for sure. Here, let's see though. Crystal Spikes does hit this two bind from 89 down to 52. So that was a pretty accurate uh, prediction from you earlier on how much damage we'd see. The double in onto Bad Dragon, though it's still just hardly not enough. That's pretty unfortunate for Alto. I think he needed that kill just to start to spiral something. He hasn't gotten a single KO yet, so there's still so many, so many swaps for J Dragon to to come in and just stay perfectly protected. I mean, five head this Mushuk is still max HP, even though he'd be swapping into something like the Feather Gatling with Parrier he doesn't really mind and it would allow another crystal spikes to hit this two vine and put it within kill range next turn i think so as well so let's take a look does he bring in five head yeah Rizzi, you're exactly right so mashuk comes in anticipating maybe the feather gallon cleaning up the calibus but no let's see how much damage it does and actually does a bit amount but the parrier holding on decently well only 30 percent damage and all right, the Calibus on Ulto's side will be able to outspeed J Dorgon's Calibus. So does finally get the kill. And Tufine doesn't really take that much damage going forward unless the mix comes in now and Crystal Spike. But okay, instead it will be the Wolfie. Yeah, I mean, from here, Tufine's at 52%. I'd imagine a Plague plus Uppercut would be enough to kill. And if it were to, uh, if, if he forces Alto to swap instead and bring Mashuk out, then I guess that is a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good defense. Uh, maybe J Dragon has got something else in mind to try and alleviate some of this parrier. The plague, it is towards Calibus instead. So targeting the other side, Calibus 14% remaining. Not much at all to hang on as an uppercut comes through. It's just not enough, but with the exhaustion, with mm -hmm. the Toxic Ink, it will be killing Calibus at the end. But he takes a Toxic Ink on Flu for the trouble. Minus one defense, low HP once more. Now Alto's Mushuk is ready to play. Exactly right. So final two Temtems. Alto has such an uphill climb currently. Final two, and you know, they're decent on stamina wise but they're relatively right around half of their hp pool and j dorgon has won too many tempts and one of them being rather healthy at 70 percent and one of them being plus two special attack plus two special defense i guess that doesn't mean too much considering the mashuk but the plague almost going to be able to take down the two vine and wolfie does actually the one two punch does take two vine down so now is mashuk and is very lonesome versus the entirety of the remaining team of jay Dorgon. so i think the victor will go to jay dragon so gg very well played and way faster than i expected for some reason <laughs> i wonder now if going into game two if alto is going to respect ban the mix like days of past where if you don't have those aoe techniques or in this case you only have two but you weren't able to get them off in time 
you just you gotta honor Bannett. You can't let this spiral again. J Dragon used Mix so perfectly this game. Not only did he knock himself into Puppet Master, which means he can do it turn one on game two if he wants to. There is nothing that can stop that from happening yeah. other than a ban. But he he used it for damage, which was incredible, but also the swapping back in to wake up Nox. He had a support role with his Puppet Master, and that's something you don't see in a lot of teams. So J Dragon is utilizing Mix incredibly well, and I think Alto should be a little more worried about it than he was in game one. I think yeah, so the initial bans were the same. Tolkien and Yal are knocked away, but Alto bringing through the Nidrasil that was banned previously. So a, a different game for Alto already. If J Dragon banned it, that means it must have done something when they met earlier in the tournament. So getting it through first now might bring Alto back to the heights where he won previously. It might give him that uh, second life where, where he's able to make it come back. Uh, otherwise, I, I'm not sure this mix, I, I guess the, the best part about Nidrasil is allergic spread is AoE, right? So maybe mix <laughs> is a little bit more covered. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I'm pretty sure also might be running it. We just see a Nidrasil like Tsubaki's that wasn't running it, but we'll take a look. I'm pretty sure maybe he picked it up and didn't ban the mix because he hoped to have a better answer going forward. So, man, I guess, I mean, if you were to ban the mix, that meant the Tolkon was rather open. So, I think this is still an appropriate ban. And it looks to be the same on both sides. So, the Yowler did get the ban. The only exception here is J-Dragon now, instead of banning... Oh, I actually don't recall what the previous ban, but I know Alto did get his Nagais through. So, it had to be the 2-Rock, maybe? It was Nidrasil last time, and then ah, Alto second banned Golzi last time, so that now he's banned uh, Wolfie instead of Golzi. So both of them have gotten a previously banned Tem through into the second game, so things are going to be interesting for sure. Yeah, let's see what comes to fruition. This Golzi does get this good opening, or not too much of a good opening. Actually, it doesn't seem to be doing too much initially, right? Turn one Golzi has what? Just an uppercut going to him? Because I don't think he has a P jab, like something like a Mashuk would have, right? He gets, uh, his turn ones are show off, sparkling bullet, and uppercut, typically. Ah, very true. So could elect to show off, but maybe not the best board to do so uh but not the worst board to do so as well it doesn't seem to be taking too much damage but we'll see obviously picked it up to guarantee to have it or something like those heavy ashi dashes on two vine two rock and hey a little charge iron filings for calibus and some sparkling bullets could go a long way for it as well but it looks like j dragon went for the trusted mix as well as that big yukama so let's see how it all pans out in this game number two of our lower bracket finals Yeah, you kind of hinted towards it. The Swolzy Golzy is not fantastic right away. Although, if it does stay in, go for a show off. <laughs> Maybe even a rage. There's no way Ooh. J Drag is running rage, though. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> if show off is in play, it, it wouldn't be terrible, right? The most that it's taking immediately would be, uh, you know, the potential P Jab or Wastewater Toxic Ink. There isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there, there's not too much damage that could come Golzi's way right away. So getting getting a show off, getting Oshidashi available, swapping out and coming in later to attack Tuvine or Turok might just be the play. But instead, he just retreats, doesn't want to take the damage unnecessarily, brings Mix in instead, and we know where this is going. The P-Jab yeah. towards Bad Dragon first, knock down that uh, the defense just a little bit, Toxic Ink onto Mix. And his Toxic Ink back towards Nidrasil as that is going to be that neutral damage, but no Toxic Ticks to be seen. Exactly right. I mean, hey, a little bit more damage than the Calibus received, so not all that bad. However, this is a fantastic swap over for J Dragon. You get that size Surge online, and we saw from game number one, I think a size Surge packed about like a 60 plus percent punch onto the Mashuk. So it's almost really scaring the way to the Mashuk. Let's try to take a look at what this Mashuk wants to become uh, to try to eat a side surge relatively well. I mean, immediately what stands out, I guess the two vine doesn't feel all that bad. Let's see if Alto agrees. Oh, it's going to be the other bird, the two rock instead. I guess just some big stone ball pressure. And oh, you know, another potential AOE target just in case the mix falls into that range with something like a rock ball could be nice. 
you know, it, it worked out a little better as well because the Earth resisted the crystal spikes, but they clicked more techniques pretty quickly there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that is good damage on Turek on the entry. It's poisoned for one more turn, so it's going to be down at that 52% range. It is very, very heavily pressuring out this mix, though. And last time, I don't know if J-Dragon can crystal spikes himself again. Before, was he 70... Was he low 70s or high 70s? Because he was down at around the 20% mark. If he was low 70s and Crystal spikes himself again here, uh, he dies to the allergic spread damage. It doesn't mm -hmm. even have to be a toxic tick. Yeah, I think way too risky of a play, which J Dragon is saying here. So does swap into this Mashug just to pressure out both of these Tams. But hey, a Feather Galley might be chunking the Mashug, but instead goes for a big blow on the Calibus. Finally, though, the Reactive Vial will be proc in. Water Jet trying to return the favor, bringing it down to 24%. But all right, Ninja still getting some defenses up as well as the two rock but unfortunately for the two rock i still think even a single p jab might just be enough to do it but hey more importantly that is double defenses on the nidrasil so it almost lies on the shoulders of like the mix to just do crystal spike special attack damage because all the other ones don't really seem to be able to get through nidrasil all that well so I think this is also recognizing a potential clean wind condition without any fire temptims, without any wind temptims. This Nidrasil is posing a big, big problem for Jay. So let's see how he maneuvers around this Nidrasil. You know, there is uh, also always the possibility of a uh, Ukama Blizzard. Very true. <laughs> that, would, that would probably do about that 25, 30% mark, which is definitely worth talking about in a game like that. But the tenderness on the Mushuk that is potentially massive. The crystal, I'm sorry, not the crystal spikes, the toxic ink onto Turok means it dies to the poison. Bad dragon, though, it did overexert in the process, so he's got to either die or leave. But this is a pretty decent kill for J Dragon early on. Get rid of the Turok, get rid of that heavy Feather Gatling user. And now there's only one more bird left, right? It's just that two vine. Who doesn't really want to fight the double melee and special attackers of Jadrak inside? He might be in a pretty good situation here, despite not having the most Thames to fight Nidrasil. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, we saw it before. You kind of ignore the Nidrasil. Try your best to kill the other Temtems and then kind of just let Nidrasil hurt itself through stamina issues down the road. So that could be a good game plan, but at the very least, well done to J-Dragon, getting the first kill just like he did in game number one. And oh, make that another tenderness. So now 33% reduction on Mashuk, 33% reduction on this Nidrasil's attacks. Uh, and okay, a nice little P-Jab just to let that Narcoleptic hit do a little bit more. But surprisingly, doesn't get all that much done. But damage is damage yeah, the, though. The tenderness plus the parrier is just a really fantastic setup for Mushuk. It's uh, it, it's always going to have that value against physical Thames. Even if it is taking effective damage, I mean, just that tenderness might honestly be enough of a difference maker because now something like Ukama isn't nearly as afraid of a toxic ink. Yeah, you're so right. And we saw last game, I believe it was a Tukma Mass, Yukama. So it's able to hold off against those Wastewaters and Toxic Inks. Though both of those, as you mentioned, are physical attacks, which really get chunked down to size from those Tenderness. So yeah, I think that's going to pay off dividends in the long haul. But we see here also going for a double saw, bringing in that Fake Beard 2 Vine. And man, 2 Vine is looking impressively well into the current board that J Dragon has put out. Uh, has presented it to Alto CPG into both of these spots are going to be doing a huge amount of damage. You know, Rosie, you pose the question: How much damage did the self spike do? I wish we knew because that could be some kind of play for Jay. But I think you're right; it, it was so close, right? Because it got down to like 10 HP. So I honestly can't even say if it if it, if it would be a good play. I think he still has to be careful though of this two vine. I th I think that he would survive. I think that it was closer to 50 or like mid 50s than it was to 60. But that is just so low. I mean, unless he's got refresh somewhere in the depths, <laughs> that yeah. feels like it's too low. 
otherwise, though, two fine, it's scary, but I wonder what a double in would have done. Uh, it's not here today. It does swap in for Ukama instead, but Golzi, oh no, Calibus swaps, so Golzi stays in, probably goes straight for that Oshidashi Nidrasil instead for this Calibus. It's definitely a nice spot. Charged Iron Filings, though. That means that Nidrasil is weak to Water Cannon and Aquatic Whirlwind. And Aquatic Whirlwind. That is some great tech over from J-Dragon. Of course, it goes a little bit both ways. The CPG should be pretty... Oh, oh 80% on the Gozi. I meant to say against the Yukama, the Nidrasil could do a good amount of damage. But as we mentioned before, Nidrasil's working at minus attack down. So perhaps this Yukama... This heavy, heavy special attack, Yukama. The one Temtem that could currently deal with Nidrasil. I'm wondering just how much damage something like an Aquatic Whirlwind would do. And does does also want to risk it? Because, you know, an Aquatic Whirlwind into either spot might be pretty good for J-Dragon. So, I wouldn't be surprised to maybe see a double swap. I mean, Mashuk and Calibus will eat a Water Cannon slash Aquatic Whirlwind way better than the current board. So let's see. It is a Calibus there, but the Ninja still stayed. So who is targeted? Ah, nice value for the water cannon. Yeah, that was quite a lot of damage. The allergic spread will be poisoning Ukama, but not hurting it very much at all. It is a pretty difficult board state for Ukama, though, as now it is two toxic Thames versus this poor, poor fish. If it is running Blizzard, he definitely would outspeed the Calibus and with Nidrasil low on stamina, even if it is speedy enough to go first, it probably doesn't want to stay in attack right now. Uh, so potentially is on its way out. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> agree. Those double toxic inks, I'm pretty sure even with Tukma Master not should be enough to take it all the way down. I mean, it's not adding any additional toxic ticks, so maybe just that base damage might not be enough. But oh, the blizzard with the speed tie. This is interesting. That was some good amount of damage. So maybe Jay is saying, I don't mind if my Yukama goes down, but it looks like it didn't even get targeted there. Yeah, toxic ink. So it was the Calibus that, uh, that had that speed tie, I would assume. As, uh, yeah, now, I think so. Now that's the coin, the arrow, that it goes to J-Dragon. He will go first this turn. But Nitrasil, I wonder... 11%. <laughs> He's probably still strong enough to hold on for an Aquatic Whirlwind, isn't he? That is that is heavy resistance from Nitrasil. <laughs> yeah, one But that fourth, is not right? much HP. Yeah, so I don't think it's Yukama... Uh, even though, no, no, he just used Blizzard last turn, right? So he's not back online just yet. I'm wondering, yeah, we just see how much the Toxic Ink damage did. I don't think it's enough for that 11%. So, you know, if Calipus outspeeds the Ninja, so I guess there's a world where he could double it. You know, Water Cannon, Toxic Ink. But you might just be taking a bit too much damage on this Yukama. The question is, is that all right for J-Dragon? Does he mind letting go of this Yukama? Because, you know, there's not like a Fire Temtem or a Tolkon that he desperately needs it for. Is it worth just to get the confirmed kill? I almost want to say no. I want to, I think saving an Aquatic Whirlwind for something like the Two Vine might just be more ideal. So let's see where the swap is looking like. Yeah, Ukama does retreat for Mushuk. And I, I absolutely agree with you. I think the Aquatic Whirlwind on Two Vine will probably be necessary for uh for j dragon to pull ahead is that two vine it's just gonna be so tanky against all of the rest of his thems and and really the only effective damage otherwise is mashuk who also takes so much effective damage so in this situation now oh that is so good for a mix the toxic ink puts it right into puppet master which means this might actually be a safe turn to double attack this two vine I think so as well, and you know, it already has one Toxic Tick, so even if this Alto Nidrasil goes for Allergic Spread, the initial base damage on Allergic Spread is not very much, it's very small, so it's not like he's going to be going down, and it doesn't receive those three additional ticks of Poison. So yeah, I agree, Varzi, I think it's rather safe. If he wants to get the confirmed kill on Nidrasil, I feel like that's fine too, but he doesn't have to worry about the heavy hitting CPG that once threatened its life from this two vine. So yeah, I could see a world where a double up on two vine could be nice. I guess the only problem Jay has to consider is also had a rather speedy two vine. I haven't been able to see if the Mashuk on Jay's side is faster. 
but we have seen a tornado buff forget that the quarks dirt goes first and i always forget mix has that that's like a newer tech people are working with yeah and then the mashuk does outspeed the feather gatling so even though the minus defense means it's not enough it can't hold on he still gets that uppercut off on Duvine, still knocks it down to 30% and puts it in a really good spot. As now, I have to imagine, based on the damage that Quartz Dirt just dealt, that is, uh, Crystal Spikes is enough to kill Tuvine. And now there's no more AoE for Alto, so it's just a surviving game. That is maybe asking a lot, though, as some of these Thames on J-Dragon's side are getting weaker and weaker. But this is this is definitely still an open door. If he's able to kill Tuvine or deal a lot of damage to Mashuk, he might be able to do it in time. Yeah, it looks like maybe it looks like a rather free double up. Maybe a quarter whirlwind into Psy Surge on that spot doesn't feel terrible because a quarter whirlwind would have go first. Three pile versus one pile. Tuvine goes down or it connects on Mashuk, and if Mashuk swaps in, it has to eat the Psy Surge. If Tuvine stays in, then the Psy Surge gets applied onto the Calibus. So I don't see any real downside to a potential play like that. I guess the only downside could be that Yukama does go down and maybe you miss the window to kill the Tuvine. But at this position, Tuvine is like low enough for like Solzy to perhaps take it down. So maybe not the worst for this Yukama. Mashuk does swap in, so if it is that double in that you had suggested, this will be incredible damage. Aquatic Whirlwind to start Mashuk down to 81%. Oh, but the Crystal Spikes wanted to save that uh, that that Psy Surge, didn't want to use it and risk, yeah, Ukama dying and potentially not having it available for Mashuk immediately. So instead, now if Mashuk stays in, he does die this turn. But it could also just be another strange... Oh yeah, this is good. With Swolzy, that means that Tuvine does die if he swaps in, as this will be melee damage hitting that spot as well. So this is probably a kill on this first spot for Alto, no matter what. Yeah, let's see. But man, J-Dragon's Temtems are dangerously low. They're almost just one-shot range. I think they are pretty much one-shot range. Minus one defense, Calibus, 20% Swolzy. Uh, Jay has to be very, very careful with these next couple turns. It's going to come down to a matter of speed. Fortunately, though, for Jay Dragon, I believe the speed does favor him with these priorities. So let's take a look. Two vines swapping in for the Calibus. What did this mix do? Does it go for Psy Surge or okay? E manipulation seems like a safe play. Bringing it down to a third of the remaining HP. Can Swolzy do the rest? No, it went for the Calibus spot. Yeah, Sparkling Bullet, still decent damage, although Wastewater coming into Swolzy will be enough to kill, and that means there are no uppercuts, there are no Oshidashis for this Tuvine, or for Calibus for that matter. It's final two Thames for J-Dragon, and wow, Calibus is going down no matter what this turn. Mix doesn't have enough stamina to Crystal Spikes, and an Emanip's not going to be enough to kill either of these spots. This is really good for Alto. This is GG's. Yeah, I believe so. Look at the difference of HP. That's a 78% Calibus, even in a 1v1 situation. Oh, J-Dragon, memeing a little bit here in our lower bracket finals. Well, hey, Alto is going to be making it interesting, going all the way into a game three situation. So not too bad, man. This is looking like an epic showdown to concede the final lower bracket finals gets decided here one person's tournament run will be coming to an end and the other person has one more step ahead of him has to face off in her grand finals against none other than turby he was the winner out of the upper bracket so let's see how it pans out it looks to be the exact same bands from game one and game number two so relatively the same so far but okay starting off the two vine that's a little bit different right i don't i don't believe the two vine was the initial pickup for alto yeah two vine for the lead is is a little uh less common but definitely still makes sense it's really hard hitting it does a lot of damage onto the calibus the full fee not quite as much but uh you know different different problems or it, it's fine this could uh, still pretty easily be like a p-jab knocks bomb onto volfi followed by another uppercut 
and and mm. it would probably outspeed the dv and protect two vine for sure i mean hey a plague still poses a decent threat onto two vine i think it's looking in the neighborhood of like 30 35 percent so not completely uh so let's see guys final game three and it's always so impressive how huge these temptims get you know it makes me wonder if the future maybe the good old dynamax temptims come into effect <laughs> where we get some humongous temptims behind the tamer or something uh but i think that is a long way from actually happening so let's hop back into this game so as you mentioned tuvine does have a lot of attack onto calibus so maybe that's a swap and it looks like it is for jay yeah swolzy instead maybe uh <laughs> maybe not super thrilled with a tuvine cpg in front of it but uh also who knows the uppercut onto floof is just so much damage the feather gatling to follow up it's not enough to kill 7.9 percent remaining on floof that was scary amounts of damage on that uppercut yeah really well read for the side of also you know jay was completely considering that the calibus was going to take the force there but instead well done for Alto. Recognizing the potential swap into Golzi goes for the Feather Gatling onto the Wolfie. And now any little attack will be bringing the Wolfie down. However, we did see the Plague does go first. The question is, if this 2 fine has a Tornado, uh, I, I, don't know, I usually think Wolfie's faster, but Alto surprised me before. But it looks like he's not too confident on the speed. Yeah, just wants to uh, take that swap stay a little safer as sandstorm does go before anything else Oshidashi as well onto that galibus eating it much nicer than everybody else would have mashuk now just going for the tenderness he knows that floof is no longer a threat to this board state so you just reduce the attack of swolzy that is almost borderline bm <laughs> yeah i can see something like that i mean swolzy val he has so much value and how how much physical prowess he has so hey mitigating that by 33 percent is a whole lot of damage or uh, damage saved down the line especially as early as turn three uh he hasn't hit his charge iron filings just yet so let's see maybe his charge iron filings this turn and then Mashuk can maybe get some good melee damage onto the opposing Mashuk. So it is the filings. Let's see how much it's going to do on this Calibus. All right. Does bring it down to 50%. Yeah, that was about 16% damage, right? So uh, even... <laughs> it, it wasn't great. It, it wasn't too, too much. But the, the perfect jab from Mashuk to Mashuk is a great start to humiliating slap as well. Just lowering the defense all the way around after you lower the attack this swolzy minus one minus one he's supposed to be plus attack he's supposed to be raging <laughs> and showing off and oshidashing into the stars but no this is not the game for swolzy he's definitely had a rough bout and now at minus one defense minus one attack as soon as tuvine comes to the board that is it for poor poor swolzy yeah, as well as potentially a two rock as well. But all right, JJ Iron trying to get the P jab train going as well. So down goes the Mashuk uh, in terms of defense, not in terms of his life. But okay, another P jab. That is exactly one of the best ways to deal with the Mashuk. Slowly but surely taking his defenses away. And that is two defenses down on the opposing Mashuk, which will go a long way. I mean, Feather Gatling is the best answer for it. From this position at 91 or not, I still think two Feather Gatlings is easily enough to take down a Mashuk. So this is just also preparing for when they're on the same board together for whenever that Feather Gatling does end up catching the Mashuk. So man, this is already off to a great start for Alto. So let's see. All right, Gozi was at minus one defense, so didn't want to stick around too long. Instead, the toxic skin, or actually, it's a mucus, if I remember. So Calibus does come back in. And oh, does it have to eat a Tendi? No, it's the Mushuk. So this Mushuk looking so bad in this game number three. Also has done a great job at bringing it down to size. Yeah, five had just not going to have the impact he needs to have. At minus two defense, you mentioned it, two Feather Gatlings will be enough. And now minus one attack. If it hits minus two, minus three attack, it's just not going to be able to uppercut the two vine or the two rock at all. 
and it's going to be a very one-sided bout. Although Speed Arrow once more for Bad Dragon and Calibus, this time a B-Jab onto Calibus, letting Five Head have its day. The Toxic Ink on Calibus gets it down pretty low, 16% remaining, just enough for a Charged Iron Filings. Any humiliating slap onto Bad Dragon, wow. minus defense, minus defense, everywhere you look, it's... Oh, the Feather Gatlings are about to do so much damage. Yeah, an incredible amount of damage, and hey, that is a free swapping into one of the birds. Pick your poison, they're all going to do the damage. Too fine it is, just to be resistant from these toxics. I mean, hey, the Earth was resistant as well, but this one has the fake beard there. So as you mentioned, I mean, wait a second. I think Cal... Oh, no, no. I thought Calibus was at minus three with all that going down. But it looks like both the Mashook and the Calibus at minus two. And if you look at the back line, you know, Jay almost wants to swap in. But like the only one that could maybe eat it decently well is a potato that takes double damage from it as well. It's almost like Alto's putting J Dragon in a really tough situation, so Mashook's just gonna stay in and goes for the uppercut. Yeah, that's still somewhat decent damage. It, it gets it down below halfway, but I don't know. This is this is looking scary. The Feather Gatling, it, oh, everything just worked out so perfectly. Bad Dragon goes down just like that. Swolzy now coming back in, so now it's the minus attack melee squad. <laughs> exactly. Which is also yeah. painful to see. If two vine, two vine, there's no way that it's faster, right? We just saw that it <laughs> uh, it was slower than five head, and I have to imagine that Golzi is right around the same speed, maybe just a little under, so the P jabs go first. If I... it is a P jab Oshidashi, that might still kill two vine even from the minus one attack states. Yeah, I definitely think so. Uh, of course, two vine is determined. So I mean, it's just for the damage, though. So maybe with the with the uppercut or P jab, it can serve a little stamina. But either way, man, all she dashy. I still think it might be enough. Of course, two vine's defenses are quite up there, so maybe able to hold off, especially considering that minus one attack, as you mentioned. So you know, he probably does have to double in. But I don't know, keeping uh, both of these in are kind of threatening because Tuvine uh, just has to decide where to go. I mean, the only thing saving him is the speed. Can Swolzy do the job? Oh, the good <laughs> friend. That is insane. <laughs> that That's incredible. The Feather Gatling on 2-5 head brings it down to 35% despite the barrier. That was that was an incredible use of good friends. Scaravolt has earned its trait now. It, it is the friend that Tuvine always needed. Absolutely. And you know, we've had such a long time without Tuvine. I completely forgot about Determined. We, we've right? only seen those on, <laughs> on two Thames, right? Platymus and, and Tuvine, and we never see them anywhere. So I forgot that that trait existed. Yeah, I don't blame you. Tuvine has been so out of the loop, but also is here to remind everybody that Tuvine did indeed get some major buffs recently, and he's not looking half bad, especially considering the toxic heavy teams that these last tamers are bringing out. So in comes the Noxolotl. But, oh, the Tornado just before the two vine goes down to the potential Swolzy, taking about 40% on that Noxolotl, but the Uppercut should bring it down, and it does that. However, there's still another bird. There is another one for Alto, and his name is Turok. So you killed one of them, but Alto not out of answers just yet. And yeah, Turok effective into Mushuk. Potato, Swolzy. The only one he has to be careful with is that Wolfie. But he's so close to going down anyways that I think he's going to be all right. Yeah, I think just to be safe, it would be better for Alto to bring Turok out now and, and get some damage while it's right in front of him. Uh, and then keep Mashuk safe to, to fight the Wolfie or at least tank a hit later. But no, Mashuk, it's got the minus one defense. It might still take a lot of damage here. Potato with the potential narcoleptic hits on minus one would be scary but uh i mean turok at 100 percent hp he's not going down to a single plague Th this is still looking very very strong for alto yeah i mean i like what you said i thought turok was looking kind of good there you have raw uh you have stoneball for gozi you have feather galling for the potato Maybe he was just worried about the Oshidashi, because Oshidashi still has yet to be seen from the Swolzy. 
Uh, of course, that minus one attack, so maybe doesn't even get like 50%, but maybe just wants to preserve the two rock as much as possible, especially considering that three prior plague uh, still looming in that background. So I guess this is a tad bit safer. Just maybe set up the kill with like a P jab on potato. That way, just a single feather gatling slices through it. I can maybe see that as a potential play for auto. And okay, never mind. A good old wastewater onto the Mashook man even just a wastewater did that much damage to five head that was like it half is. of its hp remaining the fire tornado now targeting five head as well this might yeah that's just enough to take it down so one more punchy guy gone only swoles the remaining oh that narcoleptic hit does do quite a lot of damage to mashuk low on hp low on stamina minus one defense if yeah swolesy comes out now this is potentially a good board state for J Dragon as, as Swalzy should be able to kill Mashuk before it takes damage. The potential Earthbreaker is here for Scaravolt though. That would be pretty scary. Earthbreaker coming through even without the physical investment on a Scaravolt, even without the plus one from half full. This is a minus one Swalzy at 33%. I have to imagine that's enough to kill. Yeah, I would think so as well. You know, I'm trying to think back. Was it Alto that had Magma Cannon? One of these tamers was working with a Magma Cannon Scott of Volt. I think that was a half full one. So I think I'm mistaken here. So maybe it has to wait a turn. But hey, if it does have the Earthbreaker, that will be huge to see. But in comes the Volfie. So Charge Iron finally is looking to get the kill on the Mushuk and pop the Bamboozle. But the Mushuk holding his ground and nullification isn't going to matter too much as it's only at about two percent remaining uh but more importantly it's able to get off a final attack here so wastewater for the kill and yes indeed so little options remain for j dragon two temptems remaining one of them is but oh whoa 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 i think only a single temptem remaining <laughs> Yeah, that was a very close one on the Thunder Strike, but resist it or not, he goes down. And Potato, rest your head on the pillow just a little bit longer, buddy. It's almost over. You don't have to look at this if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, and now with the Oshi Dashi user down, uh, there is no good answer for this two rock. Two Feather Gatlings. One Feather Gatling maybe puts it into Trance. Uh, if it's able to outspeed, doesn't take any damage. So let's take a look. 69% down to 22. So trans trade does proc, which means another feather galley will indeed bring it home. Uh, close, but just not close enough. This two rock will be winning it for Alto, I believe. The double birds on Alto's side was just so powerful. I truly, I don't even think that the Tolkien needed to be banned. Alto. It, it definitely gave Mushuk a little bit more breathing room, but I think Scaravolt could have done more this game, and, and it was definitely, you know, ready and available to be a good friend. So either way, it's it's a fantastic comeback, winning it in two and one. Alto finds his way to face Turby in the grand finals. Sit it. back and enjoy these grand finals. I apologize. I just had to sneeze. Okay, bless you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Turby did win 2-0 previously when they met. And it is... There are some interesting Thames here. Definitely the Platymus and the Drakash are both a little bit less seen. Turok taking the first ban and Yowler taking another ban on Ulto's side. He just wants to play with the big bear. He's just not allowed. Yeah, yeah, they're too, too scary for a lot of these tamers, so I do not blame them. And, you know, Alto has the game plan of just banning the Wind Temptems off the other opponent's team. So, two rock, we're going to be a good one. Fortunately, though, for Turby, he at least has a backup plan with this Volderin, unlike we saw on that J-Dragon side. But, yeah, Platymus looking to usually be pretty good. I mean, comparing it to... um against those birds not that bad right aquatic whirlwind is gonna destroy the two rock and pretty good damage onto the two vine as well so has some good answers for those uh and hey speaking of two rock it does get picked up to try to counter the scatter vote nice and early so derby looking to make a swap out potentially into something like the nidrasil could be a good one if it doesn't get banned there 
We have Volarin taking the second ban along with the two vine on Alto's side, so only one bird at, at all in this game. The potential for Blizzard on Ukama is there, but definitely uh, slight and not... Mm, it might be worth bringing, actually, as there is a Turok here. Uh, there is still... Yeah, the Scatavolt definitely doesn't like to take an Aquatic Whirlwind, but it is the Drakash instead, as Earth does even more on Scatavolt. That is right. So double Earth Temtems. Oh, no, no, no. I'm getting confused. Um, is Drakash on turn? Oh, did you see those temp cards? That was a whole mess in those temp cards. But all right, the half full Scott of Volt does get proc as it always does. Back up to 60% thanks to that baton pass. But yeah, I thought the Drakash and Turok were on the same team. But no, each tamer has their own Earth Temtems to play with. But Drakash not looking too bad as a Temtem effective into the Nidraso and the Scott of Volt. So that's something Alto has to consider. But well, let's think about these opening plays. I do think the Mashooks are going to be staying in and just go with the good old P jab action as they do. As for Scott of Volt, let's see who he most likely wants to bring out here. Nobody's really thrilled with that, huh? If it is the the Stone Ball and not uh, a read of a Toxic Tem with a, a Feather Gatling, then it pretty much has to be one of the Toxic Tems, but that's, that's a bit of a 50-50, right? That's a complicated situation where it's really up to Alto to try and make the right prediction and either Feather Gatling or Stone Ball, because if Scuttlebolt stays and it's a Feather Gatling, that's not much damage at all. But if Nidrasil comes out and you Stone Ball, it is also not much damage at all. The uppercuts to start things off onto Turok, down to 63%. The P-Jab towards John Cena makes me think it's a Feather Gatling on that spot, but no, oh. the Stone Ball on Nidrasil instead, expecting maybe the Neko Blocky Drakash to come in its place. Just not to be so Nidris, he'll eat it like a champion, 15%. And Turok looking a little bit rough now as another uppercut combined with an allergic spread will be a lot of damage. And the toxic ticks might even be enough. Yeah, so much so, as you said, I think it will be enough. So, I mean, maybe not exactly on this turn, but eventually in the long haul, those three ticks of toxic would be enough to take down the two rocks. So also might be thinking of swapping into Nidrasil of his own or the Calibus, but then it's going to be a full toxic on toxic board. And that's just where Mashuk tends to thrive, just has to do the heavy lifting in terms of P-Jab. So that those toxic inks are able to do at least a little bit more of damage but no two rock interestingly stays in so down to 26 percent is this worth to let go of a two rock nice and early because i think as you oh almost getting the kill perhaps yeah that was so unfortunate the allergic spread the uppercut the tri apothecary poison it means two rock is down and nidrasil still stands tall well, as tall as 7% HP can be, as it definitely goes down to any of these attacks on Alto's side. Although, Alto doesn't have the speediest Thames back here. Calibus and Scudavolt absolutely slower, and Nidrasil might be speed tied. And if that were the case, right now the arrow is with Turby. So it's it's kind of down to this Mashuk to try and outspeed, kill the Noxalotl, or I'm sorry, the Nidrasil, before it can do any damage. But that would also mean John Cena, Turby's Mashuk, is free to do as it pleases, as we already know that there's a speed tie there. And as previously mentioned, the arrow is sitting with Turby. Yeah, so man, I'm thinking back what that could have been about. Maybe Alta was banking on Turby, perhaps overreading it and not going after the Turok. Maybe just trying to go for like a P jab, and hence the Turok will perhaps live. But I think, I mean, Turby wasn't having none of that, kept everything straightforward. But now the P-Jab does get applied and it does go both ways. So I think uh, the Mashuk on Turby's side is now hanging out at plus, or not plus, but minus two defense, right? Let's take a look. Yeah, it is. So Narcoleptic hit should be chunking. But as we saw from before, not all that crazy. Like, I would be surprised if it does over 50%. Maybe just around like 40% at max, perhaps. We have to take a look, though. Well, if this is another P jab into the narco hit, it would be minus three. Ah, uh, so true. That, that potential could be there for maybe not 50% on its own, but the 40% that would be required to take it down to half HP might still be enough. 
and and who knows this nidrasil could have enough attack investment to really make a showing on this john cena it's it's really all up to the spreads with a lot of toxic thames it feels more likely for nidrasil to be lower attack and more uh based on you know sporzing your friends and allergic spreading for poison on your enemies although he has done pretty well in these toxic mirror matches, which means he's got to have something in the tanks, right? Because you can't poison other toxic Thames. Exactly right. The only exception a little bit is something like a Cycrox, but he doesn't poison. He just dooms these toxic Thames. But all right, in comes the Scott of Volt to try to get closer to that Fire Tornado. So just one more turn following this one and then Fire Tornado will be online. But okay, Noxious Bomb looking to do a little something and hey, gets it there, down to 69%. Yeah, the Toxic Ink on the Platymus is a nice little chunk of damage. It is still neutral, so it, uh, it slowly will chip away. It will take quite a lot more if, if Nidrasil wants to kill Platymus on its own, though it's going to take six whole attacks in order to kill. Uh, so it may be a little bit easier to just play with your friends. The Toxin Shower, though, Mushuk doesn't mind this at all. But both Nidrasil and Calibus are going to be taking that neutral damage and the Evasion. Thanks to that new update, the Evasion is going to be so good for Magia. But now, mm, Bark Shield, that's, that's looking pretty good. Now the Nidrasil is back to plus one defense. And John Cena, still at minus two, definitely has that disadvantage of the buffs. Yeah, very true. I mean, fortunately for Turby, though, he still has some clean answers to both of these Temtems, and those are some special attackers. The Drakash for the Nidrasil, and a big Scott of Volt for that Calibus as well. So it is pretty good. I guess it would be just strictly good for that Mushuk, per se. So, hey, still a good Bark Shield, but I just don't know how much it would accomplish, but I'm guessing... I mean, throwing out a Toxic Ink probably wasn't going to accomplish that much either way. So I think a Bark Shield is really nice here. Uh, so let's see. I mean, as we always say, Toxic on Toxic damage. These guys are just playing the long haul game just little by little is what these guys have to do. And hey, in the Toxic v Toxic, the higher defense does tend to win. So I think that's what Alto saying here. And oh, it looks like no Temptons will be moving. Maybe the Platymus because of that evasion. Yeah, and it absolutely does. Evasion means there is no trapped. So Scuttlebolt is free to come and play without any effective damage on the field here. He, he does just hurt the Calibus pretty well. The Nidrasil tries to swap out as it's low on stamina, but trapped inside. It's just going to be that humiliating slap onto Mushuk now at minus three. Oh boy, this is going to be a very, very scary narco hit, potentially. Yeah, I mean, it's trapped in. Minus three, as you mentioned. Narcoleptic Hig looking quite dangerous. However, I think Scott of Volt coming in on the swap two times now does leave Fire Tornado online. So I'm pretty sure Ninja Seal's faster. But of course, Narcoleptic Hit is a one priority move. So Scott of Volt should be able to go first. But maybe fearful of the water jet, it looks like. I guess he was threatened out there, but... Or maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe Tornado wasn't online, maybe? It had to be the water jet, I think. And... Either way, I think that that mom's lunch is fantastic. Mm. Wow. Holy wow. Yeah. <laughs> you said that was it. a lot of damage on the narco hit. Mushuk goes down. But mom's lunch still really good for Turby. That means both Thames and Alto's side are overexerted and cannot attack this coming turn. Which means... Scaravolt absolutely gets its fire tornado online if it wasn't already before. Yeah, I do think it was from those two swappings, but either way, I think that ended up working out way better. As you mentioned, Mom's Lunch, one of the newer items in the sets, uh, paying off so well. You overexert both of these Temptims, so it's quite literally a free turn for Turby. He gets to do whatever he wants to do. He just has to anticipate, are these Temptims just going to be resting here, or do they want to make a swap out? I mean, one thing's for certain that Scatterbolt most likely isn't going to be coming onto the same board as a Platymus. So it's one of these toxic Temtems. So Fire Tornado on Nitrosil doesn't seem that crazy. And all right, Platymus does come out, maybe trying to get another Mom's Lunch uh, trait, uh, another tr Mom's Lunch proc down the road. But wait a second, your cash coming in, knowing that Calib is overexerted. 
and wow excellent read for turby knowing that sky bowl is coming in i said it wasn't but i was completely wrong apparently yeah instead just the thunderstrike taking advantage of calibus in this very difficult state although mucus means it's not taking too much damage and vile means it's healing itself back up just a tad bit it is good in a way as now calibus won't take the effective thunderstrike damage but it is also very, very scary because this could just be a sandstorm, right? It it doesn't need to kill Scaravolt right away. And if Turby does have any attacks that would uh, would hurt Scaravolt on the opposing side, then he could just click that spot. And and this this could be a lot of damage on Calibus now that he's nullified. Yeah, very true. And there's only at plus two defense, no special defense there. So let's see. I mean, it is a half full, so do, or it is a good friend, so it doesn't have that plus one special defense to try to hold it from taking more damage um, per usual. So let's see. I could see a sandstorm. I mean, a good mud showers could go a long way. I'm wondering though. I haven't calculated before. A hundred down to zero. I mean, it is four x damage from a Drakash. I feel like that's reasonable to consider. So I'm not seeing this guy will staying in, but instead Hellfire coming in with the synergy. Not enough for the Calibus, but oh, and the Mucus protects it, of course. It does knock him down. Oh no, the Thunderstrike, it's on Scaravolt. It doesn't target the Calibus, so he leaves him alive a little longer. The Thunderstrike back towards Drakash is not going to do any damage at all. But now... It's up to this Calibus. The Aqua Stone was here. It targeted Drakash and it killed. So that means no Earth Techniques hit this Scaravolt. Turby down to his final two Thames. Definitely the Blanimus, though. Aquatic Whirlwind is still going to do a lot of damage on that spot. And the Toxic means he's not going to be taking as much damage as he otherwise would be. But this is a lot to ask of Turby now mm -hmm. as these final two Thames, despite being very capable, have a little bit too much to do. I think so as well. I mean, they're nice and healthy. Stamina stays on this match. Yes, Senor Platt. But okay, Toxic Shower is just to add the evasion. Doesn't get the kill on Calibus just yet. But yeah, I think that was Turby slightly forgetting uh, that I guess the AoE also counts as targeting Calibus. So he thought maybe the AoE didn't count as target. But still, the Thunderstrike went onto the Scatter Vault. Oh man. Did he really not want some mud showers? I guess he was reading a swap out. That has to be the reason, right? Because, you know, Alto was uh, Alto was brave enough to keep the Scott of Volt in. But I guess Turby just overread it just slightly there. Because a big sandstorm, as you mentioned, or even a mud showers would have done so much wonders against that Scott of Volt. But I think that Hellfire had to be for the Mashook, had to be for that Ninja Sill. But here goes Aquatic Whirlwind. There's no plus defense on this but not enough down to 13.4 percent but wait a second is there a world where both go down and whoa Verzi, we got a game on our hands double kill for turby yeah that was an incredible amount of damage from the east storm i thought scarvolt would be able to hang on but no two more thames mushuk nidris so platimus scarvolt the stamina battle is definitely on Alto's side, although the HP is just slightly in favor of Turby. And with things like the uh, the determined Plymouth, it might... Uh, I don't know. It can't hurt Mashuk at all, can it? If, if Scadavol recovers some stamina, didn't we see some Thunder Strikes do? Actually, wait, you're so right. This is not a half full, so, you know, it was doing like 30% at plus one special attack. So, yeah, maybe it's doing barely like 20%. So, yeah, this is might be looking a bit rough. Also, might still have it in the bag, especially considering how much damage the Scadavol is taking. And, oh, electing to overexert 89% actually did a whole lot more than i was expecting almost to 50 percent but that is a big overexertion so nidra still feeling good about that nato not to be worried about for this turn and yeah senor plat also running out of stamina so most likely has to rest or at least he has the evasion to keep himself protected but yeah once this god of vote goes down i am pretty sure mushuk is enough to take it down but it is a determined one so decently close there 
Yeah, I think at in the end of the day, the wastewaters are still going to be neutral. Oh, that's that's a really good. It's allergic spread instead of spores, which is uh, I guess it, it makes sense. It's OK. It does heal this Mushuk nonetheless, which means Platymus just has that much more to do. I I don't I don't see any way for it to harm this Mushuk. If Nidrasil yeah. were gone and there were no regeneration, I still think that just the uppercut in Wastewaters would be able to kill without any P-Jabs before Platymus could do 50%. Well, so let's see. Game number two. Who is going to take it down? And it looks like a good, solid Mushuk lead for both of these guys. Yeah, I mean, the Mushuk versus Toxic is just so strong all the time. Although, hmm... <laughs> that is uh that's a scarifold pick into an already picked Turok. <laughs> Must yeah. be something for the future because that doesn't want to stay right now. Very true. He did have the counter pick, but still elected to go Scarifold. So maybe as you mentioned, maybe a pick for the Calibus. Maybe a pick for the Nagas if it does get picked up. But it didn't seem too ideal. It could also be a pick for the Mushuk. We saw it do like over 30 plus percent. So maybe just for that Temtem alone. Uh, but it's Turby with the half full Scatterbull, right? I believe it's also with the good friend one. So maybe even getting more damage done. Uh, I mean, he doesn't have any win Temtem. So I guess it has to do the job. But if you stay in, you're facing off a Stoneball 2 Rock. So... I don't think that's the game plan. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. Yeah, for don't ask why, but having done the calculation for a half full Scarabal to survive a stone ball, it requires full HP and I think more than 380 TVs in defense. Wow. So it's very unlikely that that is how this Scarabal is built. Although, oh man, if, if he had stayed in, he would have just... Uh, Outnutted a little bit there, but no, the Scuttlebolt swaps in for Alto and Platymus swaps in for Turby. Would have taken that uh, that stone ball very nicely. The uppercut towards Scuttlebolt, the P jab towards the determined Platymus. So that's an even better swap in for Turby than he may have initially planned. Yeah, it doesn't work out that bad for the side of Turby. As he mentioned, the turban doesn't let any P jab go down onto himself. And now Aquatic Whirlwind is online. We saw how much damage it did on that Scatterbolt. It was about 40 to 50% if I'm remembering correctly. So it is a whole lot of damage. I mean, another uppercut plus an Aquatic Whirlwind might be dangerously close for that Scatterbolt. So we'll see. I mean, Ulto most likely making a swap to one of those Toxic Temtems. Ah, but wait a second. Platinum is not going to risk maybe getting hit by a Thunderstrike and gets the toxic synergy i guess that virtually works out about the same it was a 50 percent from the aquatic whirlwind but you don't risk the big thunder strike so brilliant play for the side of turby that your show will be paying off really really well yeah absolutely it's the same amount of damage is just delayed over a couple of turns but that's absolutely fine for really both of these teams as they're here for the staying power anyway they definitely don't expect to be done by turn 10. So if it takes four turns to do that 50%, then let it happen. In the meantime, you can spam some tendernesses, some P jabs, try and make them a shook fight a little bit easier for your own specific side. And sorry, Rosie, re remind me one more time, would you say? Or uh, forgive me for that, Rosie. Um... <laughs> oh, good. We, uh, Going into the next turn, I I don't imagine Scarabold wants to stay, uh, but it is Nidrasil swapping out first for the Scarabold on Turby's side. This is a pretty nice spot, actually, as it's just going to take another Baton Pass, probably not take the P-Jab, as uh, the, the Mushuk fight is definitely here to stay for a little while now. P-Jab, P-Jab, Mushuk, Mushuk. They just want to punch each other in the face, and it's heartbreaking. But now an E Storm, not going to do too much damage at all to anybody here. So Scatterful takes the free Baton Pass and now can leave just a little bit happier, a little bit healthier, and with Fire Tornado available for Nidrasil in the future. Very true, and it almost like the turn, the tables have turned. It almost looks like Turby has the good friend Scatterful with how healthy it is right now. But man, Scatterful overexerting right there. 
So not able to do too much there. But as you mentioned, Mashuk doing what Mashuk do. Just trying to P-jab each other. So let's take a look. I don't believe Turby Scottable has the NATO online. But oh, keeping everything in. Let's see. Does he have a cheeky Earth Breaker? Why is he trapping in? Ah, just wants to go for a big hit on potentially Mashuk. And just wants to hurt that Scottable a tad bit more. Because now that it's trapped in, I think a single uppercut should be enough considering that additional toxic tick. Uh, so well done for Turby. He's going to get a confirmed kill on the Scottable in this next coming turn. Yeah, trapping everybody in, it just feels so strong. When you're playing aggro, when you're playing slow, even if you're stalling, if you're able to force a board state that you're happy with for just one more turn, that is pure progress, especially if you catch off a swap. And in this particular instance, it works out really well as, I mean, you kind of mentioned it, Scottavolt is on its way out. You only have to deal 4% damage to it in order to confirm the KO to the poison. So just click anything. It doesn't really matter. This this could be AoE. This could be targeted directly. The Thunder Strike, it is towards this Mushuk. So 71 all the way down to 33%. And John Cena, so low on that stamina, does decide to take a bit of a rest and a thunder strike for his troubles. But that is oh. uh, that is an OX knocking off the poison, yeah. though. So actually, Scudavolt able to survive a little bit longer. Alto could swap out, come back in later, and have another good friend play like he did previously, protecting the Turok back in the lower bracket finals. Yeah, you know, I'm a little bit confused about this cage now. I thought the cage idea was to make certain that the Scottable wouldn't be around down the road, but he went for the rest. I understand not overexerting, but I almost felt like you just had to take advantage of Scottable being trapped in right there and just take it down because, you know, you you took way more damage receiving the Thunderstrike than you would have taken from just overexerting slightly with the uppercut, right? Uh, unless he OX. Okay, okay. Mashuk OX. So never mind. Okay. Uh, I thought he had a little bit to go, but okay. It looks like that wasn't the game plan. But in comes the Platymus and in comes the Drakash. So let's see what Turby has in mind. Almost enough to take down the Scatterbolt, but it looks like Ulto wants to save it down the road. And in comes the Calibus. So good read, it looks like. Drakash doesn't feel too excited about that one. Yeah, now Ulto can just click cage on his own right so this could oh, uh yeah. this could potentially be a forced oh no i'm sorry neko blocky the drakash he's got chamomile he's immune oh. he's not gonna be trapped in place so that would not be the play right now this is easily leaving not being trapped in place nitrosil instead is going to eat pretty much everything that uh <laughs> that this calibus has to throw much much nicer the Nitrosil coming out for both sides as Alto retreats as Mushuk. Toxin Shower from Magia the Platymus. It's not going to do very much at all to anybody. But the two turns of evasion is very nice. Humiliating slap towards Nidrasil. It's starting to get a little bit lower now. 46% HP and minus one defense. This is kind of where Turok loves to fight these kinds of snakes exactly right and man calibus might just be the difference maker in these games of inches with toxic v toxics going at it h slap is such a difference maker as well as those p jabs as we mentioned before and yeah having those minus defenses as you said that is exactly what two rock wants to see almost like low hp temptums and a valash that's just where he thrives so man turby taking a beating on those toxic temptums nice and early but it didn't come at, it didn't be, it wasn't absolutely free. He definitely returned the favor on the opposing Mashuk and the Scatavolt. But I think Ulto just has the healthier Temptums as it stands. But well, let's take a look. Now, Toxic v Toxic, Magia is immune for this turn. But it looks like Calibus was done with those H-Slabs. Instead, it's going to be the P-Jab user, Mashuk, coming out to play. So, Noxious Bomb. I mean, it's a little bit of damage, but damage is damage, as I said. So, just a little bit under 10%. Yeah, I think it was about 9%. Or not 9%, I'm sorry, that was 7%. But uh, Toxic Ink and Spores as well. He knocks Mashuk down nice and low, but three turns of regen means Mashuk is going to be healthier than he started if he were to leave and utilize all of that regen. But I don't know, maybe maybe Mashuk does want to stay and just go for a few more P-Jabs, cause a little bit more chaos. 
and, and open the door later for Turok to be even stronger. I think the main thing that's holding Turok back right now is just Matt Gia, the Platymus. With Determined, it's not able to be P-jabbed, which means there's no world where it can be knocked down low and then a single Feather Gatling wipes the floor with it. Alto probably needed either Mushuk or Scaravolt to make that fight and, and to kill that Platymus earlier. So mm -hmm. not being able to do so does put Turby in a pretty good position. Swapping it out, keeping it safe is good for his future as well. Calibus comes in for Alto. Doesn't want to risk taking more damage on that Mushuk as the narcoleptic hit was coming through and definitely would have been enough to kill otherwise. But now a bark shield from this Calibus. He's just going to buff up these defenses. You talked about it earlier. The team with more defenses is the team with the advantage in these toxic versus toxic mirror matches. Even with the Scaravolt here, it's special attacking. So it can still hurt this Calibus quite a lot. But everything else, for the most part, is pretty much nullified attacking Calibus from here on out. Yeah, I definitely agree. So, as you mentioned, Scatterful does at least have the Thunder Strike, but is not going to come out without a cause. Calibus does get his water techniques online. I believe Water Jet, if not at the very least, Aqua Stone should be online. Followed up from a Toxic Ink. That was going to be some big damage coming in. So, out comes the Platymus. Let's see what Ulto decided to do. Does he overexert when he's tempt him? And yes, he does get the overexertion on Nidra. So Turby playing that mom's lunch perfectly in these games. And nice little heals coming on to Matt Gia, the Platymus. Water Jet was indeed online. So good swap out for both of these guys. Also reading the Narco hit on the Mashuk earlier. And now Turby reading that Water Jet onto the Scatterville. So well done. Both of these guys playing the best they can. Really don't want to lose against each other. So let's see, how do you play it from here? I always have the toughest time when it's toxic be toxic because it's always about like the little plays. Like, see, we see a toxic shower just to add those evasion. But wait a second, you remove the regen. Oh, man. I, I don't know if that's the worst thing in the world to remove the regen. I think the little bit of damage on both Nidrasil and Calibus is worth it. Uh, you know, it's it's a game of inches like you started to mention, so that those are two pretty big inches and two Thames at the same time. And it keeps Platymus still pretty safe. Aquatic Whirlwind is still available if Durak ever wanted to find the field or if, uh, if, if Platymus were to come in on a death, it, it's still here. It's still available to, to ruin Durak's day. So if it's able to get those Toxin Showers just ticking away very, very slowly at the neutral Toxic Thames, that's, that's still value. That's still inches crawling closer and closer to victory. And I would say it feels like Turby has the slight advantage right now, even though he has the only fainted Tem. Yeah, so first Tem Tem down of this game number two will be in favor of Alto. And hey, Rosie, remind me if you remember, is Toxic Showers special or is it physical? I would say special if it's on the Platymus, but I don't know for certain. I think that it's special. I It, it feels like it would be a special attack. I'm, I, don't, I don't think that I've ever seen it as a physical. Okay. Because uh, otherwise, it would just be weird <laughs> using a special <laughs> attack Platymus with Nox Bomb. <laughs> Nox Bomb, Arushiel, and, and Venom, or Toxic Spread. That, that'd yeah. be pretty rough. It is a newer technique, so forgive us for not immediately knowing, but we'll take a look after this game. But in comes the Scatavolt, threatening out both of these Temtems. Thunderstrike looking straight into Calibus' face. And I believe, oh man, I can't recall. I'm confusing it with game one already. So many games today, I can't recall if Fire Nato is online. But either way, Nidrasil isn't doing anything as it did overexert in that previous turn. Um, so let's see. Scatterville is staring down Calibus, potentially swapping into two rock. But man, the Platymus is still there with the holding on to the Aquatic Whirlwind. So let's see. It looks like Ulto wants to bring out a Scatterville of his own Toxic Showers one more time. I think this gets a kill, Rosie. I didn't think it would get a kill, but it does. So well done. It looks like one apiece is what these tamers are going at. Yeah, the Scaravolt that was so very low for so long is down, but the Calibus, he holds on just barely at a percentage left. He is going to heal himself just a little bit based on the reactive vial, but 
I don't know. That's still very low. He does get the water jet off on Scaravolt, so that is very nice. That is goal achieved for this Calibus, if there ever was one. You yeah. know what? There were a lot of goals achieved for this Calibus. He had quite a few Toxic Inks and uh, H-Slaps throughout the first game. I think... No, he hasn't H-Slapped anybody this game. That was a single turn of P-Jab, P-Jab on Mashooks. Yeah, I think so as well. And you know what, though? This is actually not too bad for the side of Turby. If he's able to handle Calibus nice and early, Drakash is going to be feeling a bit better about that. Of course, also still not out of answers just yet. He does have a heavy stone ball on that two rock to really bring down the Drakash. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I mean, Calibus is on his way out and is nullified right now. So something like an aquatic whirlwind probably even takes it down if it chooses to throw it in that direction. And you know, that wouldn't necessarily be the worst. I feel like a double into that spot. Uh, either Mashook has to run it, Two Rock does to, uh, has to do it as well. The only exception, I guess if you leave your Scottable in, Nidrasu is going to be taking it down. Is it a worthy trade? What do you need your Scottable in for anymore? I feel like it almost did his job already taking down the Calibus. Or do you think like a neutral Thunderstrike is worth it on a, on a two rock? Or maybe it would just never go off perhaps. It's definitely good damage, and with Baton Pass, you can never count Scaravolt out, especially in some of these slower-paced Toxic games where it can just swap in a couple of times without really risking taking damage. You know, there, there are quite a few turns where these Thames are focused, kind of like this one, on using Spores on Mushuk, trying to heal itself back up, trying to support each other with things like Bark Shield, that as Scaravolt's sometimes pretty safe that was something turby was taking advantage of in the early game every time that he had a free turn he would swap the scaravolt back in take 10 percent more on baton pass and that's why we even made the joke about it looks like it's the good friend scaravolt because it's at like 80 percent <laughs> hp so it's definitely still viable uh and it would outspeed a stone ball from the turok so it could potentially still do 35 45 percent damage yeah, very true. So maybe that's exactly what Turby has in mind. Saving it down the road, potentially for that two rock. Especially since Rockfall is a one hole technique. But oh, keeping everything in. I think it's a little hellfire time. Nidrasil not liking the sound of that. So let's take a look. 66% down to 23. And Mashuk didn't like that as well. But boy, oh boy, that uppercut doing quite a bit. And oh, the Mashuk does fall down. So good exchanges to, for both of these players. But I think the Trapped in Mashuk and the Trapped in Nindersil does spell doom for the side of Alto. Let's see who could bring in for this uh, Mashuk. Oh, he doesn't really have that much or anything, actually. <laughs> oh, this is looking rough the, for Turby. The Scaravolt feels okay here. It does get good, like the Thunder Strike into Mushuk will be enough to kill, and it's not in a position anymore due to the Baton Pass. It won't be killed before it can attack, especially considering this Drakash, if he wants to stay in and sacrifice himself, he will be killing Nidrasil in time. The Fire Tornado, no, he targets the Mushuk instead. It's just not oh. enough to kill, which means Scottable has to go for that E Storm or else things might start to look a little bit bleak. That could potentially be two kills, but no, oh, he e Storm does. it is. Mashuk will go down. Nidrasil, the 10% was there. Even, yeah, that, that was hard resist and a lot of damage. So very strong Scaravolt now finding itself into a two versus two. But this is kind of what Turby was looking for, right? This is Platymus coming back in. He doesn't have the swap to come back in, but he's been saving Aquatic Whirlwind this entire time. Turok, this is its first time on the field. There is no rock fall. We're only looking at things like Feather Gatling, Stoneball, and Nox Bomb, which means Aquatic Whirlwind plus Thunderstrike probably is enough to kill Turok. Yeah, I think so as well. The question is, can this kind of volt outspeed a Calibus? Or actually, what am I saying? Oh, actually, that is a question because Calibus should at least have an Aqua Stone online. It has the Earth Synergy to its side, so should pack enough of a punch, especially considering that it doesn't have plus one defense anymore from a previous P-Jab slash H-Slap. So let's see Aquatic Whirlwind, as you mentioned, will be deployed. Let's see how 2-Rock takes it 100 
actually took it a bit better than oh, I expected. Wow. About just 60% there. Oh, wow. <laughs> Feather Gatling onto Magia brings him nice and low. The Thunder Strike towards Calibus will be enough to kill protecting Scaravolt for the time being. But now, Turok, you're low on HP, but you might be okay here. Yeah, Rock uh, is what online. Else? And so is Tornado, so that is huge. Unless Scaravolt overexerts and gets the kill, did also just win this. Wait a second. I don't think it does 42%, does it? Oh, it does. <laughs> All right, guys. It looks like these guys don't want to go out with just yet. So congratulations. Turby will be going all the way to a game number three. And woof, that was such a close matchup for both of these guys. That was intense. That last game was so, so incredibly close. I can't believe how much damage Scaravolt did. It makes sense to me now why Turby picked Scaravolt against an already picked Turok Very last true. game. <laughs> because if that had not happened and Scarable took the ban, things would have looked very, very bleak for Turby. And now it's going to happen again from the looks of it. This Turok coming in it's into a double Mashuk and a, uh, a Scaravolt. Although maybe it's the two vine. Either way, I think that this would be really strong. I think Turok hits a little bit harder, right? But uh, I, I, yeah, either way, that was so, in so incredible. That damage that it dealt. I did not think 41% was possible. Yeah, I was a little bit nervous there. If he picked up a two vine, he wouldn't have an instant kill like he does have on the two rocks. So it would have left Turby with a decently free Thunder Strike in that spot. So good thing we see the two rock game picked up. So now, as we saw from the previous play, Turby did have the tendency of swapping it out. Maybe plays a little bit of mind games just to get some good damage onto, as we saw, both of these Temtems about 42% on the two rock. But I don't think it's staying in. A stone ball to the face is a little bit too much. So let's see how these the rest of the rap, draft plays out. And whoa, it was so fast. You blink and it was over. But Ulto, Nidraso, Calibus, Scottervo in the back. And Turby going with that Drakash, Nidraso, and Platymus in the back line. So very similar. I feel like it's the exact same Temptems from at least game number two, right? Let me take a look. Um yeah it looks to be completely identical yeah which it makes sense as it was such a close game i feel like any individual read or turn that could be played differently is definitely enough to swing it in either player's favor it, it's kind of like you mentioned if if the two rock if last time you know the stone ball did go out on that spot and the nidrasil swamped in or no platypus swamped in uh if not if that doesn't happen this time if the stone ball doesn't go if it's a p-jab feather catling on john cena and there's 41 42 percent damage on two rock right away things could be looking very different for turby yeah you're so right that was an initial stone ball in game number two is it gonna be a feather gatling this time and does turby risk it for the biscuit let's take a look these guys decided it's got a vote does stay in so does Ulto overplay it here he has a confirmed kill with the stone ball thunder strike interestingly goes first so that is inevitable stone ball one prio play this is already looking way way different a scottable down as early as turn one ouch i know turby was trying to play the mind games but perhaps a bit risky in game number three uh yeah, I mean, that that Scaravolt was definitely a game changer for Turby previously. Being able to swap in and out so often, getting the Thunder Strikes on Calibus, the threat of the Fire Tornado and Nidrasil always looming. It's He's not out of it yet. He still has Drakash. He still has that Earth and Fire to target those same two Thames, the Nidrasil, the Scaravolt. But now things for Calibus are looking a little bit more difficult. Now it's kind of up to Mashuk to uh, P-Jab spam a little bit more and, and do the damage on its own. Uppercut towards Turok, P-Jab towards the Nidrasil Feather Gatling into the same P-Jab Snake. And wow, this is Alto out for blood right now. The spores will just barely be enough to kill Turok with that poison ticks. But this is, this is still looking so scary. Alto still has his Scaravolt available, which means that this Platymus is not feeling super happy. 
Calibus still counters the Jerkash. The tools are still here for both sides. Yeah. But, but this is definitely an aggressive Alto on game three. Oh, yeah. And both of them pretty aggressive. Already two Temtems down as early as turn three. You don't see that all the time, especially with these more mid rangey bulkier teams. Uh, but not too bad. You know, Two Rock was also a Temtem that Alto really wanted to use down the line. Effective into Platymus, Nidrasil, and Mashuk. So not a bad exchange there. You did sacrifice the Scatter Volt, but taking down the Two Rock, especially that nice Sweat Band Two Rock at that, does feel like a mini victory in itself for Turby. So let's see, as you mentioned, not out of it whatsoever. Of course, one tempt him a, a bit lower than the rest in terms of that Nidrasil, but out comes the Drakash, taking advantage of the Calibus not being on the board just yet. So Uppercut does get the kill. So Alto, another one. That is two Temptems down for the side of Turby. So let's see. He's trying to make uh he's trying to come back a bit from the back. Who does it bring in now? I guess John Cena the Mushuk doesn't feel all that bad. But you know, with that Calibus still around, with that Scada Volt still around, ah man, it almost feels like Alto. I don't want to say GG just in turn three, but those Temptems right there do pose a good threat onto Turby's team. Uh, definitely the Calibus alone, right? You have the water technique for Drakash, and you at least have H slaps and a little uh, neutral damage for both of uh, Mashuk and the Platymus. This this is incredible. <laughs> so right now the uh, the Drakash is not very happy. Even though it could potentially get the Hellfire off a of Nidrasil or even more, it, it could do quite a lot of damage. It's going to take an uppercut for its troubles, and that won't be worth it. We saw previously that uppercut's doing 60, 65%, mm -hmm. and with only 85 left, that means that as soon as that chamomile immunity is gone, a single toxic ink would be enough to kill from a Calibus. It wouldn't even need to be the water techniques. Hell, even maybe a Scaravolt would be able to do it, so it's it's gotta go it's it's kind of forced into that situation which means this could just be that p jab narcoleptic hit towards mashuk that uh also is kind of making himself famous for it here lately huh yeah definitely so oh at least just one more time gets that over exertion mom lunch one more time to perfection but hey does get uh does get some chip damage onto the platypus but all not too much it looks like the more value came out from Turby's side just for that turn number four with that overexertion over on the Mushuk, uh, neglecting any forward progress in terms of minus defense on the opposing Mushuk. So not too bad. Now Turby has the playing field or, you know, has the PJAP value on his own and it is still already at minus one. But, you know, he doesn't really have another temp temp to try to back up those P-Jabs. It's almost like John Cena doing all the heavy lifting. You have to P-Jab and be the physical damage dealer all in one. So, I don't know. This is a tough uh, a tough time for the side of Turby. Already two temp temps down. Oh, we'll see, though. I, 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 if there's anyone that could get it done, it will be Turby. But Calibus coming in just to really pressure out this Drakash for the falling turn. Or for the future, rather. It's not on the board. It will be that uppercut towards Nidrasil, followed by the Toxin Shower, giving this Platymus a couple turns of evasion. Bark Shield from Nidrasil. No more minus defense. This is exactly what we saw before. Calibus just loves taking that, even though it's really only good for John Cena. It's still good for John Cena, and given that that Mushuk is one of the scariest Thames remaining for Turby right now, that is very, very big for Calibus indeed. If Calibus can just spam those Toxic Inks towards Matt Gia the Platymus, then he's got his water techniques available for Drakash, and there would be nowhere to hide. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see if he wants to gun it down. Uh, Nidrasil didn't overexert just yet, but oh, goes for the year show just in case there was a potential swap, but at the very least does a little damage. But as we mentioned in game number two, a difference maker is that age slap in those toxic mirror matches. The minus defense wins games. Uh, and wait a second. How didn't we ever notice Mashuk was holding a matcha? Uh, forgive us. Uh, <laughs> forgive me for that. How did I not notice that? That is some spice there. 
we did see it proc last game uh, during like, the one after the cage turn where he, he overexerted himself and had to rest, but uh, it didn't really do much for Turby, I don't think, because he, he got the matcha rest, took a big hit, and then swapped out. <laughs> so we would have just gotten the stamina back anyway. But that is still good damage now. Calibus taking all of these hits. Another Toxin Shower that's more evasion for this Platimus humiliating slap back towards John Cena, trying to fight just a little bit. And Nidrasil going for that narcoleptic hit while it's still here to be had. 13% left on John Cena. Energy drink on Nidrasil means he can keep going. This could potentially just be Nidrasil overexerting to pop the evasion on Platimus and then Caleb is just going for a little bit of damage there. But it also could just be the death of John Cena. It's already minus two defense. Another humiliating slap, despite overexerting Calibus, is probably enough to kill. I think so as well. I mean, that's the idea. Turby does want that Calibus to overexert, so that is what he's banking off. He's hoping it overexerts, so this Jakash should come in rather freely. Uppercut just to punch the Calibus a little bit, but double rest for the side of Alto. That is humongous. That means now Ninja's so able pressure down the Mashuk. And now the Calibus Water Jet is online. Fortunately, though, for Turby, he still has a back line. A Water Jet into a Platymus is A OK -okay for the side of Turby. So we'll see. Uh, one thing we do know Drakash can't stay in because that's at least a Temptem that's able to answer the Scottervolt in the back. Without that, it's going to be a rough time with just an Aquatic Whirlwind. And I believe that was the only water technique, right? We saw a Toxin Shower. Noxious Bomb and Aquatic Whirlwind. Did we see the fourth move on this match here, Platymus? I... Arushio, yes. Oh, true. So yeah, only one water attack. And there we go. You said it. John Cena on his way out. So things are going from bad to worse. We might just have a grand final AAL champion. And his name might just be Alto. Of course, a couple more turns to be played, but this is the final two Temptons for the winner bracket finalist, Turby. Uh, but man, also playing out of his mind. And hey, yeah, Rosie. Those, <laughs> <laughs> those early aggro turns from Alto were just game changing. Now, the Hellfire will be killing Nidrasil, but I don't think that Alto cares. I, I think that with Scaravolt still alive with Calibus, Still here with Mashuk, still relatively healthy. This Nox Bomb's just not going to do anything. The Water Jet's going to kill this Drakash, and it's all on the back of Platymus. We saw this before. The Platymus just can't hurt Mashuk. That is absolutely GG's. That is Alto taking the AAL 2-1 to one over Turby. That is right. So congratulations, everyone here today, guys. People clap, people clap.